Hi, my name is Gary Taylor, and in this video, we're going to take a quick look at Kyoto. Kyoto is an API client generator that can create the CLIs and SDKs in many different languages. Now, today we're going to focus on .NET and we're going to focus on creating a CLI. So let's get stuck in. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is install Kyoto. So head over to the Kyoto website and go to download the application in your operating system. So for me, I'm on Windows 64 bit. So I'm just going to download that. As soon as that's downloading, um, I have a C drive bin folder like Linux, so and that's got a path map connected so that it's on my path, which means that any files that I drop into the um, C drive bin folder hopefully will automatically be available on the command prompt. So I'm just going to copy and paste these and head over to my C drive bin folder. And once I've done that, I'm going to then copy and paste or cut and paste them files in now i've already done this so i'm going to skip this section um but obviously for you you just copy them across and then i'm going to head over to a terminal just to check that the kyoto cli is actually up and running and that it's registered and that it's got the correct version that i expect so let's head over going to look at the CLI we can see that we can see all the prompts that are coming back and I can even see the version so that's successfully installed okay so here we're going to look at building the Kyoto CLI or command line interface this is very cool this allows us to actually build a command line interface that allows you to then connect to your API of choice so let's start off by creating a, a new project. I'm going to go into my test area and paste in a couple of commands that's going to create the project. And we're also going to um, add the git ignore. Then we need to you know, have a look at that and go into the project. So the next bit is to um, add the dependencies that's needed. Now I've noticed it's not asked us to change directory. So it didn't ask us to go into the directory. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to add the uh, git ignore again in that directory. Once done, we can now add all the dependencies that's needed. And you can see um, it's worth having a look at them dependencies and just studying them on your own. Um, especially things like the HTTP wrapper, which is incredible, by the way. Um, you're able to swap out HTTP wrappers within this, but let's not get, let's not get ahead of ourselves. So I'm installing now the dependencies. It's going to take a couple of minutes for them to download on, on a machine that's not got them already. Uh, but I've already done this, so we can see that this is pretty quick. And with the power of video, I've been able to fast forward that so you don't have to see everything. And just have a quick look at the files. We can see just a basic um, hello world type um, um proj file if you like or program file if you can call it a program file anymore um, if we have a look at the project we should be able to see the dependencies that we've added and we can so that's a good start so far so now we've got the skeleton of a project we need a swagger api to actually use so we need to be able to have something to tell Kyoto to, to use. And what we're going to do is just take a, a sample um, Swagger document. So let's create that file. And of course, we'll then take the content and paste the content into this file. Simple stuff. This is a, a, a Swagger definition file. So you can actually use any of your Swagger documents, including pointing it at a URL um, so that, you know, if things change on a remote service, you can actually just then generate it. This is where the magic comes in. We look at um, the command uh, 
uh, for Kyoto and we say generate. And we're going to generate the CLI. So where you see the dash L, you can sort of dash I, I don't know. It, you can see that there's the CLI command or uh, argument. And that's going to tell us that in this instance, I actually want you to build the CLI. So I'm just going to bring up a terminal down here and we should be able to see this. So pasting in the command that I've just taken from the website, we see there's a CLI. We're going to point it at a Swagger document, uh, open AI spec, and we're going to put it in source.client. So when I run this, it should generate a source folder with a client folder in there. And that's all the generated C sharp code for inter interacting with this API. And this has got a lot of knowledge and experience and history built in. You might look at these files and feel that they're bloated and feel that there's too much information in there. But actually, all the data that's come in and all the things that are being done are from the history and experience of the team on how to interact with APIs. So our program file was a little bit bleak. It was just the hello world. Uh, what we want need to do is to bootstrap. Um, this app and we want to create a new command line builder and we want to be able to connect to Kyoto and say look here you go register all of your endpoints and provide them as um, CLI inputs so that instead of me having to call them within code there's a nifty set of arguments that you can run from the command line to actually um, run the events or run the endpoints if you like so that built, it's always a good start when something builds, especially from a, a website. So that shows that a lot of effort's gone into this to make it great. So we're building that. You can see that this is working. So now we've got an executable. Um, it really is as easy as just running a couple of commands. So um, you can see there that we run the post command or we run a command against posts. Now, bear in mind, this is a website that's getting posts like articles or news information. They don't mean post in the um, API prompt post. What this is doing is actually running a get command on the forward slash post endpoint to get post or article number five. If you think of this as like testimonials, what we're doing is we're saying testimonials get testimonials ID 5. So don't be confused by post. Now we can see here that there's a, a bit of a problem. Um, it wasn't able to um, serialize the data. And actually this is really just down to PowerPoint and the way that it formats and has its escape characters. Um, it can be a bit of a pain. So we can see as I'm running this, we're, we're getting a couple of problems, but you know, I can show you um, a nifty trick on how to solve that. Um, and here I'm just running the delete command to, to delete one of the posts so I could consider it like a testimonial. And that's come back with an empty block to say deleted. Okay, so in this next part, we're going to look at the CLI a little bit deeper. I'm going to build the project, make sure we're up to date. Then I'm going to run a command which is to get the posts or the testimonials and list them. So um, because I hit post, it is actually posts because it's plural. So I put the S in. Now if I run a .NET command um, to run against posts and I want to get a single post ID or a single testimonial, really wish they would have uh, used testimonials here. And I'm going to get the post and the post that I want is post ID 5 and four so you can see that the data comes back and now i'm going to create one and there's the same problem with serialization or escape characters to be correct so what i've got is i've got a little shell script or a little power script which is going to actually clean that up so you can see as i run that i'm going to get a 
um, PowerShell version of the script or the string and when I run that that works perfectly I'm going to do that again and I'm going to try and um, save it as a body as, as a body variable and what I'm going to do now is just use a patch command so I'm only going to send a little bit of the JSON goodness and here what I can do is I can do the .NET run uh, pulse which is testimonials patch and the ID of the value that I want to patch so these commands are great but it's better to have a little make file and put all the commands in the make file so that your developers don't have to remember these arguments so that's what I've done here I've got this make file and I'm able to build clean my project regenerate the source which is really good if a um, third party is changing their API all the time because they're in development say say for instance so here I'm just running through uh, by doing make post get make build make generate uh, make post list and by doing that I don't have to remember the the syntax if you like of, of the arguments that we need and I'm able to run through these and do this very very quickly so here we can see make uh, post get with the post ID and the ID number four comes back and of course I can do five and that comes back just like we did before we're making it even easier for developers to be able to access and use the API on the command line which can only be a good thing so I like to put things in a variable so here I'm making a, a variable called body with the data and I can pass that through as, as a body parameter and that's going to feed through to this create command so that's a new post wish it was testimonials again but that's post that's being created you can see that now i'm going to do a patch with just a little bit of the like the json data the goodness i can pass that through made a little bit of mistake with the argument but that's fine put brackets around it and the world is good so um, hopping between windows and linux terminals is, is always fun so we can see now that this is being posted out one of the things I find really useful is to use a file for the data so up until now we've been pasting the JSON in so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a little create request JSON file just a text file on disk and then what I'm going to be able to do is get that JSON data and put it into a variable and then pass it across into the post command that's really powerful because of course if we can script that what we can do is we can generate thousands of tests and then run them just by running a make file a script file or put it as part of your CID pipeline very very powerful so we can take this one step further we can create a shell script um, API test if you like and we can run all of the commands that we've put into our really simple make file just into this script so that when we run this we can actually perform a range of tests uh, whether that's part of the development pipeline uh, part of your git check-in part of ci cd pipeline or just as a a general purpose cli for accessing an api this is something that becomes incredibly useful so you can see here this is just running through them commands and then at the end it'll say thank you and you can obviously integrate and test this and say whether the commands were successful or not which is perfect for a ci cd pipeline like i say also great for general purpose cli you guys still here wow we're, we're done we're finished but thank you for getting to the end of the video and remember please do me a favor click that subscribe button wherever it might be and also that little like button thank you very much